Hello and welcome to Eurogas. Let's talk. I'm Martina Bassan, Policy Communication Advisor for Eurogas, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by Laura Raika and Matti Marikamaki, uh, both founders of Heikamite, our new member from Finland. Laura, Matti, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm very pleased to have you here today. Let's start from the basics. Um, one of the key words of the work that you're doing at Heikamite is uh, Paralysis. Can you explain us a little bit better what is it, how this technology works? Yes. So in that technology, um, methane is split into the hydrogen and solid carbon. And that can be done with heat uh, or with a catalyst. Uh, we in Hycomites, we do that with a catalyst. We have actually a catalyst family to make a clean hydrogen and solid um, high quality carbon products. So um, if I follow on that one, so that we have here a sample of this, this uh, carbon, solid carbon that is being made from, from natural gas. And this carbon is mostly carbon nanotubes and nanofibers. So this carbon as such can supplement or can be uh, used as a substitute for, for existing uh, high carbon or large carbon footprint products. For example, in lithium ion batteries and uh, in cement industry, in, in rubber industry and so forth. So this is as such uh, also reducing the, the uh, carbon footprint. That's fascinating. And thank you actually for taking this sample with, with you. I'm sure that our viewers are not so used to see how solid carbon, this kind of solid carbon looks like. So. Uh, many benefits to this technology and the work that you're doing, decarbonization, uh, energy efficiency, circularity, we can even mention that. But what is the level of efficiency? Well, um, if I start on that one, so that, um, for example, in green hydrogen, where you are producing the, the uh, hydrogen from, from water, i.e. the end product of, of uh, hydrogen, when, when you con uh, consume it, um, our energy need is only 13, 1-3% of that one. And uh, quite a lot of that, that heat actually can be used as a waste heat. It's not only power that we need, it's, it's, uh, it's heat. And uh, we can use the waste heat sources from the hydrogen customers uh, as well. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. One question that comes to my mind, though, is, um, is this technology dependent on natural gas? Well, no, we can also use uh, biomethane and industrial side streams uh, as a feedstock. Uh, and actually, if we use biomethane, so then we, we are a ca or carbon sink. So the uh, hydrogen produced is uh, um, like a carbon sink for the customers. Yeah. So, so we, we see it that way that uh, when we are going for uh, fuels like e-methane or, or biomethane and so forth uh, in larger volumes in, in, in the future, we can use the existing methane infrastructure mm -hmm. to actually uh, transfer that energy to the end customers. And then the pyrolysis technology is, is a supplement uh, technology on, on top of those so that we can uh, actually um, make the or, or turn the whole industry as a carbon sink. So that when there's a uh, methane that is, is being produced that is carbon neutral, and when we remove the carbon and use that in a solid form, in a, say in a cement industry, then actually we are reducing the carbon from the atmosphere and at the same time run the whole whole industry. So the industry can be carbon sink. So so it is both benefit from each other. Nice. And correct me if I'm wrong, what sets it apart is that there's no storage aspect. Instead, you're creating a new product. Yeah, so uh, our sites are located near to the customer. So this is a true uh, uh, last mile hydrogen solution. Um, so no storage uh, for hydrogen is needed or transportation. Fascinating, and I'm still, um, I'm very uh, happy that I'm learning all these things to you and I'm sure that our viewers as well. And I was thinking that maybe one question that comes to our viewers' mind is, um, this technology, uh, the level of uh, readiness of this technology, maybe uh, it might take still a few years to, to get there. So I was wondering what is the real technology readiness level? 
Well, uh, it won't take a few years. I mean, we are actually uh, getting there as we are speaking. So there are, there are customers or some companies in, in the world that are already going for the industrial scale with a little bit different technology than what we have. But even Hikamite, uh, we have uh, grown out from, from uh, pilot, so, uh, sorry, from laboratory, so that we are uh, on a pilot uh, scale already. And we will start uh, building our first industrial scale demonstration plant, uh, hopefully still this year in Finland. So, so this is this is not that far away yet. That's great. That's great news, and we'll be very much looking forward to it. So, thank you, Laura and Matti, for joining us today at this edition of Let's Talk, and thank you to our viewers as well for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this edition, and that you will watch again.